North Carolina Nissan dealership employees get hammered with more than 400 criminal charges for selling salvage title vehicles without telling customers what they were buying. And a follow-up question, would a vehicle history report have prevented this? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, a longtime car buyer's advocate known as the homework guy, and I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We'll also share some tips about buying used cars, including what is a vehicle history report and do you need one? 400 criminal charges sounds like a lot, doesn't it, Liz? Indeed. In a nutshell, the article states that the misdemeanor charges primarily stem from vehicles that were allegedly offered for sale without Nissan of Shelby disclosing their salvage status and the behind-the-scenes documentation used to transfer their titles. Friends, they didn't want these customers to know they were buying a salvage title vehicle because they can buy them for super cheap and then charge you full good condition price and make a big bundle of profits. That's right. We've warned people about this before, so this trick is nothing new. But right. there are ways to avoid buying salvaged vehicles, which we'll go over in just a minute. A dozen current and former dealership employees at Nissan of Shelby face more than 400 criminal charges following a months-long investigation by the North Carolina Division of Motor Vehicles License and Theft Bureau. The allegations include 137 charges of failure to deliver vehicle titles and 33 charges of failure to disclose vehicle damage. The alleged criminal behavior began in the last year. It was not immediately clear what penalties the people charged may face if convicted. An investigation from the local television station in Charlotte, North Carolina, alleged that totaled and flooded used vehicles were found listed for sale on Nissan of Shelby's website. The new manager, Mr. Ewing, the guy who came on board just a month ago, said, I have talked to literally hundreds of customers and have started a top-to-bottom review of policies and procedures. According to Ewing, the store has not offered salvage or flooded vehicles since April 1st. <laughs> April Fool's. Right. Only four of those charged are listed on the dealership website staff page. Four members of the dealership's current accounting team were charged with failure to disclose damage and failure to deliver vehicle titles. The current and former employees face a range of charges from less than 10 to more than 100 each. Each individual is being charged relative to their expected duty and specific responsibility. The evidence gathered did not necessarily point toward a coordinated effort, but it does make a person wonder when Nissan of Shelby's former general manager, Sam Kazran, alone is facing 110 charges of failing to inspect vehicles for sale. He is no longer employed by the store, by the way. <laughs> Others among those charged allegedly used temporary tags improperly and made false statements about the sale date of cars. So all things considered, how do consumers avoid buying a used car with a salvage title? For starters, if the vehicle is priced well below the rough condition sales price, it could just be a vehicle that a dealer really wants off their hands for a reason. You could get these loan values by calling your own bank or credit union with the VIN. Yes, with just a phone call, you can learn a lot this way. The best way is a fail-safe method you can use for any used vehicle purchase. And frankly, we don't buy used cars without doing this first. Take the used car to a mechanic for an inspection. Yes. Even a private party seller can meet you at the mechanic shop. I've done that several times. And if you offer to pay for the report and give it to them, if you don't buy, they tend to agree. That's always worked for me. You can also sign a one-day rental agreement or an overnight agreement with a car dealership to be able to drive the car to the mechanic of your choice, get it done, return to either make the vehicle purchase or return the vehicle because you don't want it. Right. If you haven't seen the vehicle yet or perhaps you're buying a vehicle further from home, a vehicle history report could be the ticket to understanding a vehicle's condition and can help you avoid future headaches. You can request a report through Carfax or AutoCheck. Both services will tell you how many records are to be found based on the VIN. But if you want specifics, you'll need to pay. For the small amount of cost, we think it's well worth it. Yes, worth paying for a paid Carfax or auto check. Yes. It's definitely money well spent. Here's what you'll see if you purchase a vehicle history report. Vehicle history report providers gather data from government motor vehicle departments, law enforcement agencies, repair shops, and insurance companies to create a list of any accidents involving the car. This may not include minor fender benders that don't get reported. If the vehicle suffered serious structural damage or airbag deployments, it may not be safe if it's involved in another crash. Other damage will be listed as well. If the vehicle suffered damage from fire, vandalism, flood, or hail, you'd likely find it in the history report. In some cases, it may not be an issue. For example, hail and vandalism typically don't cause lasting problems. But if the damage was due to fire or flood, there could be lingering issues you'd have to deal with if you bought the car. A good mechanic would notice this right away, so never skip getting your inspection. And then there's title history. A vehicle's title history can tell you a couple of things. 
First, it'll show you if the car has a salvage title. Mm -hmm. This can happen when a car is totaled in an accident, but someone else comes along and repairs it for resale. Second, if you notice the car was moved across state lines several times in a short period, especially if one of those states happens to be Texas, it could be a sign that a previous owner was trying to clear certain negative information from the title. Previous owners are also listed. The vehicle history report will show how many owners the vehicle has had. Additionally, you'll be able to see when and where it was bought and sold. For example, you'll be able to see if a vehicle was used as a rental car when it was new. While it's not necessarily a deal breaker if a vehicle has had many owners or was used as a rental vehicle, you may be able to use that information to negotiate the price lower. And then, of course, there's mileage. A vehicle's odometer gets reported at certain points in its life, such as when the ownership changes. If the current odometer reading shows a lower number of miles than what's been reported in the past, that's a huge red flag. Rolling back odometers isn't as common as it once was when mechanical dials were the norm, but it's still possible. We did a show on odometer rollbacks a while back if you want to hear more about it. Service history. The best clue you have to a used vehicle's potential longevity is how it was maintained. Not all mechanics report this information, but many do. And if the vehicle's maintenance information appears on the history report, you'll be able to compare it with the schedule recommended by the manufacturer. If you're buying from a private party instead of a dealership, consider asking them for their service records to get a fuller picture. If they can only provide scant proof that the vehicle was regularly maintained, you are definitely going to want a mechanic to perform an inspection. Also, recalls are listed on vehicle history reports. So to answer the original question, would a vehicle history report have prevented customers from buying salvage title vehicles, as in the case at Shelby Nissan in North Carolina? The likely answer for most customers who were duped is a big yes. yes. And for a backup, just in case anything got through the system, a third-party mechanic doing an inspection would have caught any and all problems. So our best advice is to be proactive with your used car homework and gather information from reliable sources. Also, a brief update on our hassle-free car buying process. We are in the midst of conducting staff-assisted purchases right now, and things are going along smoothly. We have been collecting a list of better dealers. We hope to be at 100 plus dealers very soon. I can tell you that making a purchase from these better dealers through our platform will only be easier as we have rules for them to abide by. We'll have a lot more on that very soon. If you appreciated today's show and you're new here, don't forget to smack the subscribe button and ring the bell for notification of new shows. For those of you just entering the car market, you should be aware of all the free resources we have available for you on our website, thehomeworkguide.com. You'll find an updated free car buyer's guide, a free email template to use with car dealers. There's also a list of fake fees. There's a download for combating forced add-ons and deceptive pricing. It's all there on thehomeworkguy.com, free for you to download before car shopping. We're also excited to say that we'll be soon launching an opportunity for memberships here on YouTube. This decision came after a recent consult with YouTube Insiders. The memberships will allow for much improved access to both me and Kevin, and we do really enjoy direct contact with our viewers. More coming soon. As Liz reminded you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. <laughs> Subscribing is free and painless to you, but it sure helps us a lot. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we did here for you today. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guy team on our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. If you just recently joined us as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. And thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing out with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.